I spent just $50 testing ads in a month and I saw real results. After helping my students run over 10,000 ad campaigns, I can tell you that I've seen every beginner mistake in the book. From bad ad creatives to wasted budgets, all leading to people burning money without anything to show for it. So in this video, I'm showing you how to crush Facebook ads on a small budget, without wasting time, money, or making the same mistakes that most beginners do. So if you got a small budget and a product that you believe in, this one's for you. Now, before we get started, I gotta make sure that we set something straight. First thing we need to do is to agree on what a small budget's gonna look like for you. If you already have a business or you're planning on starting one, a small budget's gonna be something between $30 to $120 a day. But don't worry, we are gonna be cutting off some parts of the processes as soon as we get what we need from them. So if you are following this strategy, you're only gonna be spending what is absolutely necessary. And I get it, $30 to $120, it might sound like a wide range, but trust me, I've seen people start generating real results within those budgets. Because with the process I'm about to teach you, it's not just about spending money, because you'll also be making sales along the way too. All right, so now that we've established what kind of budget that we're gonna be working with, let's get into how you can test your ads with a low budget. So if you're here, I'm assuming that you already have your Facebook business account and your ads manager set up. But if you don't, just go ahead and set that up real quick. Then you're gonna need to create a business portfolio. So to do that, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna log into business.facebook.com. Then you're gonna click on the top left dropdown, create business portfolio, and then right here, you're gonna go ahead and enter some information. But listen to me real quick. When you do set up those accounts, you cannot just rush into running ads and make sales. Look, right now, you're about to start cooking. You got the pan and some oil, but we literally just turned the stove on. So the question is, okay, well then, how are you going to do that? Well, the simplest way to do this is by using something called a PPE, or better known as a page post engagement campaign. If you jump straight into selling without warming up your account, Facebook is going to shut you down. They'll assume that you're a scammer, and just like that, you won't be able to post or run ads. That's why it is so important to build trust with the platform first. Once you do that, you'll be able to post, advertise, and scale freely without any constant setbacks. Now, yes, if your account does get flagged or banned, there are ways to recover it, but it's going to slow you down. Those lost days, that's momentum and money that you will never get back. But don't get me wrong, PPE campaigns, they aren't about making money, at least not right away. They're about showing Facebook that you're a real business so you can start engaging and building your audience. And when you build an audience that interacts with your content and shares it to their friends, Facebook's algorithm is gonna notice that. And then it starts to push your content to even more people. That's how you save money in the long run. Because if Facebook is pushing your content, you don't have to pay as much to reach an audience. They are already engaged with your content. So the algorithm is gonna then show them more of your videos. And you wanna know the best part about running a simple PPE campaign? It only costs about $10 total. That's it. So let me show you an example of what your PPE campaign should look like. All right, so here's a simple PPE campaign where you can see I didn't change any of the settings on the campaign level. Now over here on the ad set level, I did set the goal to maximize the number of page likes where you can see the conversions location is my business's Facebook page. There's the $10 budget, the regions I'm targeting, and the age range. And I want these settings because they're gonna give me the highest chance to make sales once I do start promoting my product. Look, I want as many people in my target audience seeing my page as soon as possible. And down here at the ad level, I just added a general image with some text. Again, the goal here is just to get people to engage with my post and my page. So this isn't too complicated. I really think this only took me a couple minutes to set it up. So after letting your PPE campaign run on a low budget for three days, Facebook is gonna have the data that it needs to trust that your account is being ran by a real person. So now that Facebook knows that you're real, you can start to figure out what ad that your audience actually likes. And I know what you're thinking, AC, how am I even supposed to be able to do that? Do I have to literally go around asking people to tell me what ad they'd buy from? Because you can find all that information and data out by using something called a creative testing campaign. Honestly, a creative testing campaign is exactly what it sounds like. You're just taking different videos, hooks, images, and you're testing different combinations of them against each other. Where your main goal here is to find out which piece of content people will actually engage with, what drives the cheapest, highest quality of traffic to your website, and most important of them all, which one converts. So to set this up, you're gonna try each combination of videos, images, etc in what is called an ad set. An ad set is basically a folder where you're telling Facebook, show this version of my ad to this group of people, and here's how much money that you can spend to do it. When you take the time to test and find what actually works before going all in, you avoid wasting money on ads that don't perform, and that's how you spend smarter and not harder. Honestly, it's kind of like growing a plant. You want the brightest flowers, right? Well, that means that you gotta trim the weak branches so they don't take all the food and kill the actual good branches. So in the same way, if you run bad ads without seeing if people actually like them, 
they're just gonna keep draining your budget and your store won't grow. Back when I started, I didn't know any of this. I used to post whatever video felt right and I just hoped for the best. I remember spending over $100 just to make one sale, all because I didn't have the right strategy and I went all in on the wrong ad. Looking back now, I think that almost doubled the time that it took me to make profit off of my product. So I'm telling you right now, and I need you to listen to me if this is the only thing that you take from this video. Do not go all in on one single ad before testing this performance. So if it's not giving you any results, cut it off and just move on to the next one. And the thing about testing your ads is that there's always a chance that someone's going to see them, like your product, and go buy from your store just from the creative testing campaign. And the main goal here is that when you are setting up your campaign, you should be trying to keep a small budget while finding your highest performing creatives. So for this specific campaign, we're gonna do a budget of $10 per ad set. You usually wanna test out three different creatives here minimum. And I'm gonna let you know right now, the more the merrier. But for this example, since we are gonna do three different creatives with $10 each, that's gonna be a total of $30. So to get this set up, you're just gonna come over here to your ads manager account, and then you're gonna create a new sales campaign. Select the sales campaign and then click continue. And when you click continue, you wanna make sure that you're setting up a manual campaign because you wanna be able to choose your own settings. This is what's gonna let you choose what region your ads are shown in, your budget, basically everything. So again, always make sure that you're doing a manual sales campaign. From here, you're just gonna go ahead and name your campaign, scroll down and click next, and then you're also gonna have to name your ad set. Then you're gonna go ahead and change the conversion location to website and set the performance goal to maximize the number of conversions. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure to select the data set, which is gonna make sure that you can actually get data for your campaign. And this right here is where you're gonna make sure to stay within that small budget that we talked about earlier. So you're just gonna go ahead and set this ad set budget to $10. And then while you're here, you can also set the start date for this campaign to start running at midnight. All right, when you're setting up this campaign, your goal should be to keep a small budget while finding your highest performing creatives. Honestly, the more the merrier, but if you are gonna start off with three, that's gonna bring this up to a total of $30. From there, you're gonna go and select the regions that you wanna target with your ads. I always recommend targeting these five regions rather than sticking to the United States because they are some of the biggest spenders in the e-commerce market. And honestly, not targeting these regions would just be leaving money on the table. And then you're just gonna go ahead and add in a few more small changes and then add your media. Then after that's set up, you're then gonna go ahead and repeat this process again to have three different ad sets with three different pieces of media that you wanna test. Then from there, you're gonna publish these ads and let them run for a full day. And just one day is going to give you the data that you need because you're getting a glimpse into Facebook's day cycle. That gives a platform enough time to see if people actually like your content so you can collect the data for your next steps without spending more money than you need to. For example, if nobody shows any interest in your ad in a whole day, that means that you need to change something. What it doesn't mean is that you need to let this ad run for just a little bit longer. Remember, the goal for this ad strategy is to keep a small budget. So right now, you're just seeing if people are interested in your ad, nothing else. And listen, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And after the first day, you're gonna come back, you're going to see these numbers, you're gonna see the data, and then you can figure out which assets are actually worth scaling. And look, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. There's always gonna be some risk when you're running ads. You might invest into an ad that you thought was good only to lose money in the end. That's just how running a business works. But if you got the right information, the right guidance, you can reduce the risk of losing money and start making smarter decisions with your budget. So if you want help with breaking down your numbers, improving the quality of your ads, and figuring out exactly what to do next. Well, I'm giving out a giveaway today, giving one of you the chance of hopping on a free one-on-one -on -one consulting call with myself and my team, where you can get exactly that. And in order to win this giveaway and win this free call, all you have to do is smash that like button down below and comment the word ads, along with your biggest takeaway from this video. So when you run a creative testing campaign and you find a combination of an ad that gets good results, and when I say good results, I mean it has a high engagement, a click-through rate of 2.5% or higher, a low cost per link click, and more importantly, the most important is added carts or purchases. Well, then at that moment, you'll be ready to scale your ads without the guesswork because you have the data right in front of you. Now, from this point forward, your goal is to make sales. And to do that, you're gonna switch from a creative testing campaign over to what I call a cold audience campaign. You're gonna be using a cold audience campaign to figure out what kind of audience or interest group responds the best to your winning ad set. And if you didn't already know, a cold audience this is a group of people who have never interacted with your account. They don't know anything about your business or anything about your product. And while we get into setting up a cold audience campaign, I'm also gonna give you a few tips that are gonna help you reduce the risk of overspending and optimizing your ad campaign to get the best results possible. All right, you ready for it? Let's go ahead and get this set up real quick. So you're gonna come over here to your ads manager again, 
and then you're gonna create another sales campaign. So just come over here and click on the green create button on the left side, and then you just wanna make sure it's a sales campaign with manual settings. Here, you're gonna leave everything at the campaign level exactly how it is. Now on the ad side level, you are gonna change the conversion location back to website again. This campaign is gonna be a lot like the creative testing campaign that we already just set up. You also wanna make sure that the data set is selected and change conversion event to purchase. All right, now what I'm gonna go to do next is I'm gonna go ahead and set this daily budget for this ad set at $10 again. Then I need to change the audience settings. That's gonna be the age range and the regions that I'm targeting. After that, I need to add in some interest groups that are relevant to the product that I'm selling. So for this retro Game Boy, I wanna keep the interest groups related to it while having them always starting off as broad. The broader, the better when you're first starting out because it allows you to gather data quickly, tap into a wide audience of people and niche your way down throughout your journey of running ads. Doing that allows you to find out who your real customer is, but you can't do that if you don't start broad. So to follow that format, I'm gonna do a popular game like Pokemon for this ad set. And here, always just keep in mind that you need to be able to target as many people as possible with your ads without targeting groups that are not a good fit for your product. For example, you wouldn't wanna target this retro game to someone whose entire feed is about fixing cars because it really just wouldn't make sense. And you never wanna only test out towards one audience. And you also don't wanna stack these audiences on top of each other. Because if you do this, you're gonna have skewed data and you won't know what's working or what's not. But if you don't test out with multiple audiences, you're also not giving yourself the best chance to succeed. So I always test out with different interest groups to see which one's gonna give me the best results. Now, after getting all that set up, you're gonna head over here to the ad level. And on the ad level, I'm gonna be using the same winning ad from before. Now that that's set up, the next thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this ad set four times. Basically allowing me to tap into five different audiences. So I can see with the data who is and who is not interested in my product. So just go ahead and give me a second. I'm gonna go ahead and change the interest groups for each ad set and I'll go ahead and be right back. And boom, just like that, I got all my different ad sets with different interest groups inside of each one. Not too difficult, right? So if you've been following along, you are now officially ready to start running a cold audience campaign. From here, you just need to watch how each audience performs, cut the ad sets that are not converting and double down and increase the budget on the ad sets that are. And trust me, I've been exactly where you are right now. Trying to grow a business in my spare time, second guessing every ad, and feeling like I was just throwing money away. The truth is, the biggest difference between business owners who scale their brand and ones who don't go anywhere is just understanding the numbers. If you can't tell what's working, what's not working, or why, you're just gonna be wasting your time and money. But the thing is, you don't have to figure it all out on your own, which is exactly why I made my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, where it's customized and designed to help you avoid mistakes, understand your data, and scale your business using the same strategies that help students like Michael go from zero to over a million dollars in just nine months. So if you're serious about taking your business to the next level and you want real one-on-one -on -one personal guidance from myself and one of my expert consultants, then go ahead and click the link down in my description below and apply for a spot in my one-on-one -on -one mentorship while it's still available. Now I'm gonna be real with you. Not everyone is gonna buy your product the first time that they come to your website. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, if there is a secret magic trick to turn every single visitor into a sale, I'd honestly never have to create another ad again. But the good news, you can still make money off those missed sales, as long as you follow up with them using the right strategy. That's where email marketing comes in. And if you're on a budget, Omnisyn is where it's at. It's beginner friendly, and it lets you set up an abandoned cart flow that automatically brings people back to your store to finish your order. No extra spending on ads, no babysitting your laptop. And if you wanna follow along while I show you this email marketing strategy, all you have to do is use the link down below to get a 30% discount on your first three months with Omnisyn. Then go ahead and download and then connect it to your Shopify store. Then once it's connected, you're gonna come into Omnisyn and you're gonna go to the automation tab here at the top and create a new workflow. And from here, you could make a workflow automation from scratch, but the thing that I love about using Omnisyn is that they provide you with a bunch of different email strategy templates that you can still be able to customize. And right now we're setting up an abandoned cart flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here. And basically from here, it's just plug and play. As you can see, you can add delays to give customers time in between the emails. You can edit everything from the heading to the text, footers, or even add images. But the main thing that you wanna have for your abandonment cart emails are making sure that the first email is letting them know that they left something in their cart. Here, this is just a little reminder, nothing too serious yet. Then your next email in the flow this should add in some urgency. You could do something like telling your customers that people are buying the product more and that you only have a few left. This is where people usually decide to go back and buy your product, but there's still probably gonna be a few customers who just don't care about that. They might've just left your store because they didn't like the price that you were selling it at. So what do you need to do? 
You need to convince them to buy your product. And that's exactly what you're doing with the last email in your flow. Here, you're gonna give your customers a small discount to incentivize them to come back to your website. This could be anywhere from five to 15% off, where the goal is just to get them to come back and to make that sale. Listen, if you do this email marketing strategy right, you could start making even more sales while saving money that you would have spent running more ads and increasing your cost per clicks. I'm telling you, using this strategy is so worth it because after a while, this tool basically starts paying for itself. All right, so now you've got the structure and you've got the strategy, but there's still one last thing that you cannot skip over if you wanna really crush it with your Facebook ads, and that is your creatives. Look, if your ad doesn't grab people's attention and make them actually want your product, the amount of people who see your ad or how good your email marketing is, none of that's gonna matter. And look, I've had so many bad ads before, and the difference in performance between those ads and my ads today is absolutely insane. And now today, I understand that your creative is everything. And I understand that content is king and data is queen. And with dropshipping, even running an e-commerce brand, over 85 to 90% of your success is gonna come from the creative itself. Because your creative is what's gonna determine whether someone scrolls right past your ad or if they come and buy your product. So if you wanna know exactly what makes a great ad and you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a viral ad yourself, then check out this video so you can start making viral ads today even while being on a budget. I'll see you there. This is AC with Supreme Ecom and I'm out.